Well, hello, SOBs. What's up? Uh, I'm Jared Logan, and you are watching Stream of Blood. This is a streaming a role-playing game show where we play all kinds of tabletop games that are we usually play horror games because that those are the kind of games I like. And tonight we are playing uh, Call of Cthulhu, uh, a game we play in one of our other shows, but we're playing a very special version of Call of Cthulhu because uh, we have some very special players. Um, tonight you are watching the premiere, the debut of Coven. Um, it actually had a, a better title or a, a longer title, uh, but Twitch says that we're not allowed to use one of the words that was in that title. I'll, I'll let the players let you know what that title was. Um, I just want to give you a little background on what we're going to do tonight. We are playing Call of Cthulhu, and we are playing it in the classic era, so that means we're playing it in the 1920s. Uh, most Call of Cthulhu games happen in the 1920s. If you're unfamiliar with this game, no problem. It's basically just a game where you go on like horror investigations. You look into ghosts and werewolves and zombies and things like that. Uh, but it's based on the writings of H.P. Lovecraft that happened in the 1920s. And so, you know, you drive around in Model T Fords and you say things like 23 Skidoo and uh, someone plays a flapper and someone else plays a hobo. This is generally how these games go. Um, uh, and uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to play 1920s Call of Cthulhu, but I'm excited uh, to play it with these three ladies. So, um, the way this all came about is we're all in a kind of a quarantine pod together where we all got tests and we all kind of lived nearish each other. And, uh, so I hadn't gotten to play a game live with real people in something like, uh, three or four months at one point. And, uh, my wife, uh, could tell that it was bumming me out. I mean, I love playing on the stream, but there's just something about like having people in your house. And she was like, well, why don't we have uh, these people over our friends, our, her girlfriends, who had been asking, what is it that Jared does on the stream? What is, what is it? Like, they didn't know what it was at all. They didn't have any idea. They thought maybe I was dressing up like a wizard and then um, saying expectus patronus at the screen. They didn't know what I was doing. So um, I had them over to play a game of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, and um, here's here's what happened with that game of Call of Cthulhu. So I was playing with four ladies uh, in their, you know, uh, late 20s, 30s, who uh, had really never played a role-playing game, a tabletop role-playing game before. And I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, as a man, I figured I'll probably have to explain a lot of things, you know, probably at length. Uh, kind of let them know how it works, kind of help them with it. And uh, one thing that sort of surprised me is that um, they were better at it than any man I've ever played with and uh, solved the mystery like in an hour and a half um, with time to have like a little epilogue where they did cool shit um, because they communicated with each other. Uh, and then, of course, uh, these ladies were very funny as well, so they were funny doing it. So I'm going to bring them in to say hello right now. I'm really excited to have them here. First of all, uh, this lady, uh, you know, she's been a writer on all kinds of things. She is uh, a fantastic stand-up comedian. She has an album on Spotify and everywhere you can find an album that you should check out called Undefeated. Um, been a writer on Drag Race. Did I say that? And uh, she is also my wife. Uh, please welcome Kara Clank. Hi, everyone. Oh, my greatest credit to date, Jared Logan's wife. Jared Logan's stream of blood is your greatest credit to date. Jared, yes, Jared Logan's stream of blood. Happy to be here. Excited. Tell me about your character, Kara. My character is named um, Nora Wilkins. She's like a cigarette girl with a pocket knife who's not afraid to cut a bitch. And by the way, the name of the show was supposed to be Coven of Bitches, but Twitch is like Puritan or something. So we're you not can't to say that. bitch. You can't say the word bitch on Twitch, but you can harass women for months. Uh, that's another <laughs> issue. And we had some blackouts uh, to kind of talk about that. So we'll move on from that. But um, cool. And what's your role playing experience, Kara? I played role playing games 
I could count on one hand only with Jared and um, usually they're games that he made up for me because he knows I don't have much of a patience for dragons and wizardry. Right. You prefer more realistic scenarios like the time I had you fight Bernie Getz in the New York City subway. Yeah. Yeah. I like a mystery. I like a little murder, you know. Um, okay, I'm going to bring in your pals. Uh, she's an incredible comedian. Um, she has been a correspondent for the NFL. She's, in addition to being good at tabletop role-playing games, she's also good at knowing things about sports, a Venn diagram that is rarely seen. Uh, very funny, very talented. Um, uh, you can see her on This Joka which is an upcoming stand-up show that has my favorite title of all time. I, th I actually think the full title is Will Smith's This Joka. Please welcome Megan Gailey, everybody. Hello. Uh -oh. Are you muted? muted? I came in so hot, too. I really, <laughs> I really like gave such energy and then to be muted. It's just really, CJ's going to find out. It's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's okay. That's okay. We're all learning how to use all this. I keep saying this is the year 40 year olds learn to stream. Uh, speaking about myself, of course. I am the late 20 year old that Jared was referring to. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just a couple of girls in their late 20s played a role playing game with me. Um, <laughs> Megan, tell me about uh, your character. Tell me about Annabella. Um, my name is Annabella, and I own an antique shop um, with my friend. And both of our husbands died in the Great War, World War I. And I'm stuck in the past a little bit, and I love animals. Great. Beautiful. Uh, perfect. Um, I don't remember that from last time. Well, I actually didn't either, but I was really doing a study up. On, uh, <laughs> I was really like, Good. I'm trying to memorize. I'm like, Megan, can you remind us what the name of this game is? Um, so I've now heard Jared say it, but I, <laughs> given that I will not be able to repeat it back to you anyways. Um, I said that people were very shocked that I was playing Call of Kaluli. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Kaluli. It sounds like um, it sounds like a, a call of an old Italian man, <laughs> Mister Kaluli. Like people are having horrible dreams about an old Italian man who's rising from the sea. I don't even think it sounds that different from the name, though. <laughs> That's like if you were to ask me to say the real name, Kathuli, Kathulu. Cthulhu. 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 And Kara, Kara, how proud are you that you now know how to pronounce Cthulhu? I know how to say it and write it because it's, right. it's part of a bunch of our passwords. <laughs> yeah. oh, good. Wow. That's a good thing to say on a stream. Well, um, you'll have to change them, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, that's great. How to spell it. <laughs> I'm going to bring in our uh, third contestant player. Um, she is an incredible comedian. Uh, you can see her on Netflix's, is it called? It's The Degenerates, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Netflix is The Degenerates. She has had her own show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. She's um, just so wildly genius, Lily, talented, uh, and really funny. Uh, please welcome Lisa Traeger, everybody. Hello, Ooh. hello. What's up? <laughs> yes, less less jobs in the intros. Um, <laughs> I'm good. I'm in my childhood bedroom. That American flag is when my yeah. family moved to America, <laughs> and it's a jacket. It's not like a MAGA situation. No, it looks like Be <laughs> it looks like Bella Caroli. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's um, it's windbreaker dream. You know, the Olympic dream yeah. team style. Wow. Great. So it's it's when your family moved from Russia to America, they felt like they needed to wear a lot of American flag festooned clothing. Yeah, and like jean jackets. That's why I didn't wear jean denim for so long because it reminded me of immigrant times. But yeah, like the first purchase in America was jeans for me. Nice. Did you move here around ninety six? Um, it says oh. the bitches in, and then it says kiss me in Russian. Whoa, um, <laughs> coven of. Coven of bitches. Yeah, but I didn't want to say it and get us in trouble. I can't. Am I allowed you... to say it too? Oh, we can say it on the stream. We just can't yeah, name just can't the stream. That. That. Yeah. Know that in our hearts, we're always a coven of bitches. That's can you say the c called. word? Can you say it? Cunt. Sure. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, I probably shouldn't. Well, we wanted to be called Sad Cunts, um, but. <laughs> you wanted the name of the show to be Sad Cunts? No, just in our hearts. Okay. <laughs> it's just what people sometimes uh there were like there was a lot of twitter fighting and someone said a bunch of sad cunts hate rapists and we were like or sad cunts are coming for them i don't remember <laughs> yes but. i remember this tweet and we oh, are okay uh, this was like a me too <laughs> argument on twitter yes yeah <laughs> i took twitter off my phone today i need help oh yeah that's a good just like little break you can put it back on in a few weeks i don't remember the password i hope oh, i never yeah. go back on it's again. cthulhu one uh <laughs> it's cthulhu i think uh lisa could you tell us about your character uh, my name is Nastia. No last names because of immigration problems. Um, I have a 10-year-old daughter. I had her when I was 18. And I'm witchy. So I have Ouija boards, crystal balls. I could talk to ghosts. I have uh, this amulet that protects us um, that my mom gave us from the devil. Um, yeah, and I speak Russian. And I'm just like a witch. I didn't remember Beautiful. you had a daughter. Yeah, she's I'm 10. So, I feel like a... I feel like a bad friend. No, yeah, I don't talk too. about her a lot, but um, because of superstitions. But well, I can't wait to get to know her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I maybe I can find a way to put her into this episode. You know. Oh. I, I, uh, let's see. I, I'm writing it down. Uh, what's your daughter's name? I mean, she's I, I out with her friends. Um, she's out yeah. with her friends. <laughs> she's out with her friends. With COVID? I hope she's in a mask. No, 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 guys. It's 1922, so there well, is no COVID. But the that Spanish flu is still a thing, I think. Great. Um, her name is Olivia. The immigration changed it. Her Russian name is Luba, but she goes by <laughs> Olivia. Yeah, and we, we should get your character a last name at some point, but I like the fact that uh, it's tied up in immigration right it's now. It's just safer to do it this way. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, well, then, are you guys ready to play? Yeah, and I know um, I know my friend um, from the cigarette shop. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also Laura. into witchy shit, so I really like Nastia. Like, right. we hang out at the, I hang out at the club where she, or the bar that she's a cigarette gal at. The speakeasy, yes. Uh, Nora is a, uh, a, a cigarette the girl at the speakeasy. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, you know, that's a little anachronistic, but sure, that's what it is. Uh, and they serve booze there, even though it is illegal. Right. Um, all right. I um, If you're ready, I can set the scene and we can do this. Yeah. Oh, I'll just remind you this. Like, you guys were so good at it last time. It, it's not hard, but, you know, it's a mystery game. So that means just walk around asking people questions, learning more about them, learning about the locations you're in. And it's a horror game. So you're not necessarily trying to win so much as you're trying to uh, survive, right? If you survive, you win. Uh, okay, uh, here we go. Uh, it is it is Boston. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's not Boston crossing that out okay you're in arkham massachusetts arkham. arkham where you all live arkham massachusetts november 1922 uh nora your friend daryl dressler has contacted you about an urgent matter he phoned the speakeasy where you work and told you he desperately needed to see nastia he asked you to meet him in arkham at the old steps in rivertown now, uh, Daryl uh, has had his cards read by Nastia a couple times, and he is a firm believer in her powers. But uh, she's more your friend, so that's why he called you. Um, and um, the old steps are in Arkham. They're, they're, they're this place in uh, a neighborhood of Arkham called Rivertown. You know, uh, you, you, were in, you lived in Boston for a little bit, right, Kara? Mm-hmm. You know how Boston, Arkham's a lot like Boston. You know how uh, Boston has like little paths with like steep steps that are like really old, but they're like in the middle of the city? No. Just not okay. like yes. you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. That's something you've encountered a lot, right? Yeah. You walked them many times when you lived there, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's what these old steps are. They're just kind of like a public place that you could meet, but they're like this like kind of old set of steps that goes up the hill in this part of town called Rivertown. Uh, and they were used like in the 1700s before there were like paved streets. Hey, what's up, CJ? I, I needed a pen. That's okay. That's all right. I like that his office doesn't have a pen. Um, I bet it, I'm sure it does. I mean, it does have red Homer. Um, uh, and look that, at the clothes CJ no, was wearing 
What makes you think his office needs a pen? I just can't. I just can't believe that there's a hamper that's a basketball hoop hanging behind me uh, <laughs> no, while I'm that's... writing down facts about steps in Boston. Uh, okay, so to... Daryl called us to meet at the steps. Yes, and uh, uh, Annabella's antique shop, uh, which I have pictured behind me, um, actually is uh, you know very very close to uh, these steps. Uh, just letting you know. Cool. So we tell Annabella to meet up with us there. Sure, so you like, can do that. Yeah, my uh, Daryl is sketchy. I like okay, that. Yeah, I was about it. to say you're assuming I'm going. Daryl gave me the heebie-jeebies last time I saw. Yeah, him. he's sketchy. Um, that but... was the man we met in the carriage house. No, no, no. This is a new character. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. You guys already don't like him, though. He's sketchy. Listen, okay. when he first called, I definitely thought he was looking for money. And when he said he didn't want money and he only wanted to talk to Nastia, I really kind of heard something different in his voice. And I, I really feel Nastia like okay. it's up to you, but I feel like you need to talk, like we we gotta help this guy. He sounded very, very frightened. Um, for sure. Do you think he'll give us like anything in return? You know what? He He uh, I can tell you he yeah, owns what is a he? yeah, he owns a general store. Okay. In Arkham. I mean, I could use like a free week of groceries or something. Yeah. Well, it's sounding like you guys think it will be safer if we all go together. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I think we should ask him for a bag of groceries each. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we'll go and help him with the ghost. If that's okay. I think well, a bag of groceries. That a ghost is what the problem is. This is the, this is the whole story of Coven of Bitches, uh, Lisa. Is we've got to get Nastia's business built up to where she's making like thousands on these jobs. But here's the first episode where you start asking for a bag of groceries, <laughs> right? So the whole point of a role playing game is you develop your character until they get yeah. bags of gold. But right now, bags of groceries. So yeah. um, so everybody's gonna go and meet this gentleman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's cold. It's November. Oh, okay. It's November in Arkham. Arkham's just outside of Boston. And so um, uh, there's just like, you know, when the little bit of flurries start falling, but it's not snowing in, in earnest yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're all bundled up. And, uh, you know, describe kind of, um, uh, you know, briefly what you look like, if you don't mind. I've got probably like a very dramatic overcoat on with like gold details, big gold buttons, sort of dressed like a high school theater teacher, but, yeah. of, but of the 20s. And then probably a hat to keep my head warm and probably like some little lace up witchy shoes. But those I are fas it. fashionable, I not witch. Like they weren't witchy at the time. That's just what. That's just what I was wearing. And I also feel probably kind of maybe unsure, unsure about the situation we're going into. I don't know if I want to like go meet this guy. They seem really freaked out by him. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that he, uh, you know, Daryl did used to be into sketchy stuff. I mean, Nora works in a speakeasy. She carries a knife on her but at all honestly, times. Honestly, Annabella, all you do is sit around polishing your antiques on a Friday night. Come do something fun. I mean, take as you can see, I have a very lovely shop, and I'm very happy there. Look, at, it's so pretty. When I saw, I gasped. <laughs> so, there's okay. so many knickknacks. I do have a musket. I am happy. You have I a cutlass, not a musket. Oh, what's oh look, I have a cutlass. Yeah. Um so a musket's know, maybe, a gun. Do you have a mm. do you have a gun as well? Maybe you do. I think it said I had an antique. Antique musket. Oh shit. Yeah. So um yeah, you're you're packing all kinds of antique weapons. I think um. I have it in like a thing on my leg. Okay. It's a musket's quite long. Um, but I'm, I remember I'm tall. Aren't I like 5'10? Yeah, but Megan, I'm like, I'm like having a machine gun strap to your leg. Maybe sure. we tell Terrell I have a limp. Look, I, you know, people are always telling me in my games okay. that they would like to be able to take their musket with them. And I say, yes, you may. You are okay. uh, loaded for bear with weapons from the 19th century. Um, and, uh, you know what, we'll get into what the others look like uh, a little bit later, but as you can see, Annabella is quite old fashioned, uh, in addition to being an antiquer, she carries antique weapons. Um, you, uh, you arrive at the bottom of the old steps. And, and like I was saying before, 
it, 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 you know, here in Rivertown, there's a very steep hill that leads down to the Miskatonic River. And uh, back before there were paved streets in Arkham, these old steps were what people used in the 1700s to kind of climb up to the top of the hill. And when the three of you arrive there, you know, it, it's kind of like a, a, a quaint little park type path. There are park benches. There's, you know, trees. Um, a lot of them are barren now, though, because we're getting into November. And after waiting for just a little bit, you see Daryl at the very top of the stairs looking down at you. There he is. Uh, and Daryl kind of uh, spots you, Nora and Nastya, and he waves his hand and he starts towards you. Is Daryl drunk? I'd like to know. <laughs> um, I don't know why you would guess that immediately, but um, actually he might be a little tip. Well, it's the I 19th. Was, I was going to ask if Daryl was Irish and I'm happy that Lisa and I were on the same wavelength. <laughs> oh, I say just the face of the gentleman I showed you. Yeah, he um, looks, yeah, he looks um, drunk and intense. <laughs> or does he seem troubled? Oh, um, because uh, as Daryl uh, starts uh, stomping down the steps towards you, um, suddenly he lurches forward and he stumbles head over feet and he starts smashing his way down the steps. His skull hits them once, oh. twice, <laughs> three times, and he's being thrown around like a puppet or a rag doll. And finally, he lands in front of you. He smashes down in front of you, and a big pool of blood begins to form around him, and everybody must make a sand roll for seeing this awful, horrible fall. He's fallen oh, like 50 boy. feet of Wait, the 100? Yeah. yeah uh, roll a D1. Roll D100. Remember that's two D10s, and you can do it okay. on the dice roller or in person. I got, I, I got 40. Sanity. I got 42, and I have 60 sanity. So is you lose nothing. Zero, zero, or is it 100? If you get zero, zero, that means you rolled 100. Did you just roll 100? Yeah. Okay. So you failed <laughs> your sanity roll. And how'd you do that? Why North, do I yeah? fail? I got seven, and I have. I'll tell you why. I either have 80 or 99, I'm not sure, but I have, I got seven. I think you have 80 because you have a quite high power. Um, so um, if you rolled like a, a, a seven, then you rolled under. Even if you rolled a 70, you rolled under. But remember to make sure you know that which ones your tens die and which ones your ones die. Or if you're using the um, the dice roller, it will it should show you. Okay, yeah, I did so the D100. You are the only one. Uh, Wait, Nora, Jared, who, why does 100 fail? Well, because it's over, you want to roll under your sanity. Oh, you want to roll in this oh. game. Anytime you roll, you want to roll under the thing that you're rolling oh. against. Well, and I so, rolled under. Too. Okay, I rolled way over. You rolled way. You rolled way over, oh, and you no, actually, no, when you roll a no. hundred in this game, you critically fail. That means something horrible happens to you. So I'm going to let you know what happens. Okay. First of oh, all, no. you lose five sanity. Uh, Nora. Okay. So subtract that from your total. And um, Nora, what happens is when this happens, uh, you know, your friends, they're able to act and maybe do something to help. But yeah. Nora's just like, ah! just like screaming at the fact that this guy's laying bleeding in front of you. Okay. Um, what would you all like to do? Can we uh, give her any of our sanity? You cannot give her okay. sanity. No. Okay. Um, but we can. Can uh... we also see if this guy is dead? <laughs> that is, sounds like a great idea. Would you like to look at him and see how he's doing? Um, okay. Yeah. Let's see yeah. if he's alive. Yeah, he is alive, but it looks like he's going to need medical attention right away. Would okay. you like to attempt a first aid roll on him? Yeah. What yeah. Do we, what do we look at? to do that or not well you have everybody has the first aid skill at 30 percent. so you would roll got it your two um, uh d10s your your d100 and see if you can roll under 30 okay wait are we all doing this Fuck. you're not because you lost I'm five going crazy. sanity actually i want you to roll your intelligence nora roll oh. try to roll under your intelligence um i rolled 25 you rolled so a 25. I and, I, and I rolled over on my first aid. Why I rolled I 88. Intelligence. Oh, it's top right? No, you got a girl. Okay. So roll, yeah, roll your intelligence. Well, and, and I'm rolling just this one that's, oh, and I, wait, do I, I roll this one too. Yeah, that's your ones die, the oh, other one there. Mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead and I roll mean, it, yeah, and, and see how it goes. 
Um, and so 77. I went over. How'd you do? 97? 77. 77. That's okay. All right. I'm going to tell you everything that happens oh, right now. Okay. God. Nora, because you um, you rolled over your intelligence, you didn't full realize how uh, truly awful this is. That's what happens when you lose sanity is you kind of do want to fail. So you are now able to act. You're not screaming and like um, okay. useless and hysterical anymore. Nastya. Amazing. You had the base chance to uh, do first aid and you succeeded. Annabella, good try. <laughs> Nastia, um, this guy gets one of his HP back and he has been stabilized. He's not going to bleed out and die in front of you anymore, but he still desperately needs medical attention. So what are you going to do? I'm... I mean, does you want to solve the ghost problems or no, should we I, take him no, to I the doctor? No, I think we have to get him to the hospital or we have to yeah. get someone to come and take him. Well, okay. Um, well, okay. You, here, now, Nastia, what you asked wasn't, oh. wasn't, no, 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 no. It's all great. Getting him to the doctor has to happen now. Annabelle is right. But also, Nastia, you're not wrong. Like, he would have called you about some sort of strange problem, right? I mean, that's what you do. So well, because he didn't fall. He was just thrown around. Did we not all yeah. see him get thrown around? Yeah. yeah. Something weird happened. Yeah, that so was it, something if happened. You, yeah. If you'd like, Nastya, you can roll the skill that I only gave you. Second sight. Second sight. Okay. Uh-oh. Second sight is in a Call of Cthulhu uh, book called Coming Full Circle. There are a couple books where uh, investigators can get a little bit of psychic ability. Yes. How'd yeah. you do? Um, I rolled a 64. That's and above your second yeah, sight. 100%. Okay. So um, in other situations, you could maybe push and try harder or you could uh, add luck to it. But I think in this situation, you've got a guy dying in front of you. So you're not going to hang around and try to figure it you know, out anymore. You're just going to like maybe get the guy to the hospital or whatever yeah. you guys would like to do. Can, can we... Can like I just bring him to the hospital? I don't have any like special skills. I don't like splitting up, especially okay. when there's an evil ghost and we have okay. to like bury this guy. I just we know if there's a ghost yet, Lisa. I mean, well, I mean, there probably is, but right yeah, now, yeah, I think Daryl was attacked. Daryl was attacked by some sort of like no, being. I know, but I'm talking about his problem that he originally came to us. They're probably related. Let's move on. Go on. Okay. Um. Yes. Who's taking him to the car? Didn't I have a car? I have a car. Right. Okay. Great. Do you want to take him to it? Um. Oh, he's bloody. Listen, I'll I'll give one up for the team. You know. I mean, I'll take do we one. have insurance? Like, can he? Could we just call an ambulance? <laughs> Are there ambulances? You could. Would you rather do that? I would rather. Yes. I don't yes. even like yes. this guy. Let's call an ambulance. Ambulance. Not yeah, then we don't get to ask him about what happened. Well, maybe we'll visit him in the hospital. Maybe you will. So um, you guys start running to find like a place where you can call an ambulance. But keep in mind, the the year is 1922. So there are no cell phones. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you are not even guaranteed that any business that you run up to has a phone. And yeah. so you are soon running around like these like businesses that are nearby. But this was happening like sort of late in the day in November. So things are closing up. I think you need to roll your luck to see if you can okay. find uh, a business or a, a place where you can make a phone call in the year 1922 in Arkham, Massachusetts. Okay. So everybody All try to roll are... under their luck. I went I over. Where is luck? Luck would be mm -hmm, to the left. That's right. It's a big old box to the left. I don't have any number near it. I don't either. Um. Oh, well, then you need to go ahead and roll a D100, and that's how many luck you have. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, fuck. 20. I have... Um, and then I, have... I roll again to see if I get under it. And you're going to roll again to see if you get under it. That's right. I have I 17. I did not. Try to roll, roll under we that 17. I got 17. I got 17. Did you What's just roll? Yes. You yeah. rolled 17? Twice. Twice? Yes. Holy shit. That's okay. my lucky number. Annabella, like I said, her her business is right near here. So she finds like this uh <laughs> this like greasy spoon that she knows uh called Piper's Diner. And Piper's uh has a phone. 
um, th they have a phone in like their little like uh, vestibule. And so um, you kind of like, uh, you know, spin it up and you do all the old timey phone things and you get the uh, the operator and she's like, mm, hello. And you're like, send emergency, send an ambulance. Uh, and soon an old timey ambulance, you know, uh, let's say 10, 15 minutes later, an old timey ambulance <laughs> comes rolling around the corner and um, you lead them to Daryl. Um, and they scoop him up and they put him in the back and they wah, 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 like head out uh, toward the hospital in Arkham. Um, so, so can uh, we grab a bite to eat? Uh, did we go? Yeah, you we're can at grab the diner. a bite to eat if you'd like. We're yeah, you can diner. eat. We're at the you greasy spoon vestibule. Might as yeah, well grab yeah. something to eat. Yeah, and no, it, it seems makes like sense. I've already got something going with them. You know, like yeah. my girls so, and I were gonna hop in a booth. <laughs> you watched a guy almost die. You did first aid on him, and then you decided to have flapjacks. Well, we need to talk about what happened. Make a plan. Decide, sure. and we're hungry. Yeah. yeah that wait, makes what sense. about? Yeah. Did you ask me about my luck? By the way, I did go over. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then, then you failed, and so uh, you did not. Well, only a little bit. I mean, my luck is thirty six. I only went over forty seven. Okay. Well, that's that's you know that's that's still a failure. So uh, so okay. there you go. So you guys are all having flapjacks, talking about what you just saw, and mm -hmm. yeah, make a plan if you'd like. Make a plan. Um, we should go back to. We got to go to the hospital and see the guy, right? I think. We but why does he have any friends? I think we should go back to the river. You got your Ouija board. At least, like, let's just get the vibe there. You mean back to the staircase where he got smashed by a ghost? Yes. yes. Should we get helmets first? <laughs> this isn't. There's not a like. Dicks. Do you want to? You I can. would like to get some helmets before. Oh, you know what? Just in I case we're one. thrown around. I, Lise, uh, Nastia, I'm so sorry. I have a lot of shit like that at my beautiful store. Oh, you do? Yes. She, she has like antique like rugby helmets from like old timey football games when they Right. And you have one helmet. like well, kind of World now. War One like German Kaiser y helmet yeah. with like a little yeah. like point on the little top. Point. Yeah. 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 So you guys, um, you go to Annabella's store. And you each get a helmet. Can I get my uh, musket now? Of course you can. <laughs> yes, girl. And then you go back to the steps and you're all now wearing helmets uh, when you go back to the stairs. Um, and so tell me what you would like to do. Tell me what you would like to look at and see. Uh, Nasty, I, I think you should Ouija board. All right. Everyone needs uh, to hold hands. We'll light some candles. I have in my super big satchel. I have a giant handbag. And um, we got to just focus and let's Ouija it up. Great. Um, I think that I'm going to ask you to roll your second sight again. You're standing right where, correct me if I'm wrong, tell me if you'd like to stand somewhere else. You are all like sitting on the ground, on, mm -hmm. the, on the stone steps, right where he fell, right where he started falling at the top of the stairs. Yeah. And Nora stepped in the blood on accident. Um, no, uh, wow. what's the difference between a cult and second sight? A cult is more <laughs> like say second city. <laughs> a cult, a cult is more like, um, knowing like old legends and myths about like, you know, weird entities or ghosts or, uh, or how ghosts work. And second sight is, is when you're using your power to actually touch the nether realm and see ghosts. All right. So Do one is knowing and one is doing. Okay, so we're at the top of the stairs right now? Yeah. I rolled okay. a 33. I rolled under. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, Great. so um, you're all like with uh, Nastya in the middle of the uh, steps sitting in helmets. In helmets. And I have a uh, bloody ass shoe. And you have a bloody, <laughs> bloody shoe. And I have and a gun. <laughs> Nastya, you get, you get a vision. For just a moment, as the sun goes down, it kind of hits, the light hits everybody in a certain way, and you see a hazy gray figure. It looks like the figure of a man. It's wearing a cap, and the cap is low on his head, and it kind of shadows his face. But you can see that he has just plump lips. 
Ooh. kind of like hanging out from under that that <laughs> shadow. You can just kind of see the bottom of his face. Well, it's not you Daryl. See, he had no lips at all. He had no lips. That's right. It's yeah, not Daryl. Good point. Yeah. And you see the lips just kind of like curl into a smile. And then the light kind of shifts again, you know, like the sun kind of moves behind a tree as it's setting and he's gone. A big lip man. Big lip. With a hat on. <laughs> With a hat. Now, Natsuki, I would like for you to now roll your occult. What is your your occult is 75, right? Um, sorry. Yes, it is. All right. You I'm roll rolling under a 75. I rolled a 52. Great. Very good. Nastya, you know that what you just saw was not uh something that was here right now. It's what you call a post-cognition, right? Sometimes your power allows you to, like, see things that were there, right? Yeah. So you just had, like, kind of a post-cognitive vision. Wow. Okay. So, wild. I wonder I mean, if Daryl did some shady shit to this capped guy. Well, we haven't even ouija yet, or that was our Ouija turn. Well, I think that you guys started to do the Ouija, but then and Nastya then had her appeared. vision. Okay. So maybe we... And now an Irish cop comes along and he goes, uh, oh, God. what are you all doing out here in the <laughs> middle of the steps? Um, Officer, hello. And we... Get back to your homes and your husbands. We're just well, doing... My husband our... died defending this country. <laughs> oh, Stop. I'm sorry, Miss. Right. But thank you for your service. No, I'd be nice. I'd be like, my name is something Irish to tell your wife hi. Oh. Well, look who's so blue lives matter all of a sudden. No, I know. I'm embarrassed. But I <laughs> well, do love it's the 1920s where Irish cops man. were uh, exactly the same as they are now. Um, I know. Anyway. Okay. Um, Could we get this cop maybe to drive us to the hospital? Um, with a charm roll, you could. Okay. You know I love charm roll. Yeah. What's your charm, girl? Where What's... is my charm? To the left, to the left. 65. Okay. Yeah. You have good charm, yeah. 58. Yeah. There it is. He goes, oh, well, I can't say no to an Irish lass who's done good and whose husband served. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. he uh, gets into you into his old timey like uh, police car. And it's like, it's got the same Ooh. annoying siren. Like, rawr, rawr. And he drives you to the hospital. I do want to note that you have um, uh, rushed to the hospital like an hour and a half, two hours after the accident. Um, I so you, you think he's not better yet? I, yeah. Well, I don't know. But would you like to go into St. Mary's in here in Arkham and ask? Well, he could talk before, right? Could he not talk before? Not after he hit the ground. He never said anything. Well, we could still talk to the doctors and see what kind of injuries. Like, it could have been, like, fists. Like, instead of, like, something was grabbing him. Right. Um, yeah, you can go in. Do you want to go in and try to try to see him? Try to talk to somebody? Yeah, I'd like to go in. Okay. So to... you go in and, um, you know, you, you go, kind of go into the emergency wing where you uh, imagine that he will be uh, located. And people are rushing around, but it doesn't look you, – you, you quickly spot him in a room. Um, and, um, you know, a, a woman behind the desk, a, a charge nurse, says, I'm afraid you can't go back there, ladies. Why? Why? Well, because it's a hospital. We can't yeah. just let anybody walk in. Oh, um, I say that he's my cousin. Uh, I'm sorry. You'll you'll have to wait to visiting hours. When are visiting are hours? Fun? Well, uh, they're tomorrow. Uh, you you know. seem shady. Are you lying? I am not. <laughs> Is there I'm a way? A nurse. Can I can I charm this nurse? Um, I don't think you can. I think she's quite serious about doing her job. But maybe you Is there, could. Could we talk to a doctor? Um. We just want Let to know if he's okay, okay. and who see. hurt him. Okay. Um, soon a, a uh, soon a like a, a harried young man in like a kind of a 1920s lab coat comes around the corner, like you know, going through writing a writing on a clipboard, and he hands it to somebody, and he's like, "Yes." Is there any way that any of us know him 
coincidentally, like maybe he drinks at Nora's bars. Like, do we know him at all? Maybe. That's a very interesting question. You can roll your luck again. If you roll it, then maybe you do know him. Um, No, just you, Nastya. Can it be someone with a bigger luck number? (laughs) What's your luck number, uh, Nora? 36. You can give it a shot. I'll let you do it, too. All right. I got a one. Are you serious? (laughs) Yeah. Guys, we're on the honor system here. Don't fuck with me. Well, 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 I wouldn't even have How known that one is good. <laughs> Looks like we know the doctor. Okay. Wait, here it. Question. Yes. If you get, how would she get a one? A zero? So, so yes. So well, if she wrote a, a zero guy, on her 10th shoot. die and a one on her uh, one's die, she would get a one. But I got a zero, double zero before, and you told me that it was a hundred. But double zero is a hundred. Zero one is one. Double zero is a hundred. How do you know what ten is? I don't have zero one. There's ten. Girl, but I don't have an actual die. I have a computer. Uh-oh. So it just right, but I'm saying on my dice, how would I get anything under ten? Got it. Well, you you would because you would roll on your tens die, you would roll there's a zero zero on your tens yeah. die. Oh, and I would get a nine on here. And that would be a nine. So Lisa got okay, got it. Sorry. No sweat. No, don't be sorry. I just thought everyone thought I was lying. I no, no, no. Was I was I, my dice. I believe mechanic. you, Lisa. I believe my dice you. Mechanics um, were off. So he goes. He goes. Oh, hello. And he kind of looks around, and you can tell he, you know, you're at his job. He doesn't really want to talk about his speakeasy times. Mm-hmm. You know, but, I mean, he's got a respectable position here at St. Mary's, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. his name well, is Doctor Deming. Mm. Look, da- look, Dr. Deming, we'll be out of your hair in no time. Just tell us what's going on with Daryl. Daryl. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen. Come here. And he kind of takes you around the corner a little bit. And he says, hey, I don't know what's going on with your uh, friend, but uh, I think you should call the police. Uh, I don't know what he's messed up in, but, uh, you know, the fall wasn't the only thing I found. Mm-hmm. But the cop brought us there. Is he still around or no? I think that cop just doesn't know, but we could go find that cop. Also, are we like a cab or no? No, listen, that's what I'm not. Well, we'll re, maybe maybe we'll go get another round of flapjacks. Well, we're going to have to regroup. For ladies, sure. ladies, I, I, I don't think you're getting me here. I mean, uh, your friend Daryl, is that his name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the fall wasn't the only thing I found. I mean, this guy has recently been stabbed burned and i found marks on his neck it looks like he's recently been throttled <gasps> how what? recent how recent the bruises lead me to believe within the last 48 hours 72 hours wow okay so, so uh, i don't know what he's in- messed up in but i think it's time to bring the police in because uh why well, did he oh, say why he didn't know anything this is an this is a, a cult thing this like the police well, we don't know we haven't talked to daryl even yeah, I'm afraid we Darryl, any- ladies, I, I'm afraid Daryl's not going to be able to talk for a couple days. And we saw him get pummeled by a ghost. I think we know that whatever's been happening to him in the last 48 hours is the result of paranormal activity. Or he fought with, he fought with an actual person because stabbed is like, how, wait, how does Nora know Daryl again from the bar? Yeah, Nora likes Nora, as we established in our first adventure that we played together, Nora kind of sets a nasty up with clients that right, she right, right, meets. Right, right, right. And so Nora, yeah, she knows this guy from the speakeasy, uh, mm-hmm. Daryl Dressler, and uh, he loves getting his cards read. Uh, but he has been a bit sketchy in the past. You know, he he, he kind of comes through the speakeasy a lot. He likes to get quite drunk. Who are his closest friends? Can we go talk to like we're not gonna be able to talk to him? Can we go talk to a friend? Like yeah, or go to his, his house or something? Yeah, who's her, who's his like pal? Yeah, Interesting. We, yeah, I'd love to go to his house. That would help me. Okay, let's see if you can figure out his house. Who who are you gonna ask to get that information? Can we ask the doctor for to give us Daryl's license? Ah, <laughs> uh, look, sh- I'm look. not really supposed to uh, give out patient information, ladies. I mean that's. That's really untoward and Dr. Unethical. Deming, you wouldn't want anybody to find out how much you're coming to my bar, would you? Because you're coming by a lot. 
Mm. Roll intimidate. Mm. My intimidate is 75. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Or is a badass bitch. Dr. Deming. And I rolled a 74. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, uh, all right, fine. Uh, and he uh, goes over to uh, another clipboard that's hanging off of uh, Daryl's bed. And he looks at it and he gives you an address in uh, the, wait, let me see here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he far. gives you the address. It's it's in Rivertown, Rivertown. where you met him, mm-hmm. but it's on Sentinel Street. Uh, and he gives you that address. Thank you, Daryl. We owe you. I mean, um, not Daryl. Dr. 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 Deming. Deming. Dr. Deming. Deming. Um, but as you leave, you see that Daryl is like fully like tubed up and like, you know, inside of his bed like he's got you know white bandages around his head he looks like an old timey cartoon of someone who's gotten messed up you know wow um okay are you going over to that that address we'd like to go to rivertown i know i have a car but we had that damn cop drive us here you did and he's gone now he's not gonna i'm not gonna let you have a an irish cop just drive you everywhere the entire no i know that'd be that would be fun though (laughs) it would be it would be um, um, I think there's yeah. a bus that comes here now. Maybe is there a bus? There is a bus. I will let you know that it is getting um, dark. It's getting later now because you stopped to have flapjacks after <laughs> the guy almost died. <laughs> so, do you want the real Elaine moment? <laughs> Jujubes. <laughs> it's just really. You were like, yeah, we're at a diner. What are we gonna do? <laughs> So Wait, do you want to go get Meg? Should we just go get Annabella's car? But okay. that's still far too. Well, can't people? Can't three women hitchhike in 1922? Uh, I I can't think of something safer or less dangerous. You know they did have bus service, but I think it's okay. starting to get late. Yeah, I mean it might be something you do tomorrow, or uh, or if you'd like, we can just kind of skip over how you get over there. Surely people knew how to get around a mid-sized mm-hmm. town. At 8 p.m., yeah. even in 1922, would you like to just go there at 8 p.m.? Yeah, wow. just there. Um, you are standing in front of the address you were given by the hospital. This is the Dressler home. Um, it's in a, it's on Sentinel Street in Rivertown. There are rows of respectable houses with small front and backyards. So you would say that this is a, a bit of a starter home, right? Daryl is quite young himself. Uh, it looks like he's done pretty well for himself. He's he's bought himself a nice little plot here on Sentinel Street. The house is blue with a well-kept yard and a little apple tree that's now losing its leaves. What would you like to do? Would you like to just go up and, and knock? Well, does he live with anyone? Well, I don't know. You don't know that yourselves. You just oh. see him at the speakeasy acting a fool I, let's just go up to some of the windows and do some peeking that feels not sketchy at all um <laughs> you uh walk up to the window there is a light on inside and nora oh, okay. just starts then, looking inside if there's a uh, light inside maybe we should go knock then. nora <laughs> uh what an interesting uh, technique i want you to make a spot hidden roll and if the other girls are looking into the window with her they can make spot hidden rolls as well spot what does spot what it mean oh i have a high one it's a skill it means spotting things that you know okay. other people might not i went okay, great. Uh, i went well under excellent um annabella you guys are all just i went under too them. i went under too Nastia, oh, yeah. you as well. You guys are just looking into the window of this man's house, and you actually uh, don't see anybody until you catch a woman in a reflection. And she, there's a mirror up on one of the walls, and you see a, a, a woman. She's she's small. Um, yeah, she's small, attractive, and she is. Uh, you you only catch it for a second, but in the mirror, it seems like she's arguing with somebody. Uh... But we don't see anyone else in the room. No, and then she moves out of you know where you could see her in the mirror. She moves out of that uh. like sort of frame. Kara we, has oh, Kara is altering her lighting. Okay. Could we try and look in a different window? Um, you could, uh, but I'm going to start giving her roles to know that you're doing this. Oh, okay, okay. Like she might notice that you're peeking in yeah. all of her windows. You can still do that though if you'd like. 
And well, we, maybe the go maybe she's arguing with the ghost and we need to help her too. I don't know if ghosts like have like argue like what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could also still go knock on the door and play some sort of dumb like oh hi I don't know what three women should we tell Dar should we tell her that Daryl's in the hospital? <laughs> that doesn't seem like a crazy thing to do. Yeah, that's what of that okay. We'll yeah, and see her reaction. Yeah, well that'll be our yeah. um yeah. cover for going. We'll say him. we what wait, are we gonna we lie found, and say we saw we found him? We don't know. Yes, him. We, we are him. three friends. We were I don't know if they've gotten a hold of you. We were three friends. We were walking and your husband is in the hospital. Are we still wearing the helmets? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you are no longer wearing the helmets unless you would like to be. No. No. Wait, okay. Jared, you said that she's in the house arguing with somebody unseen? No. In the mirror. You couldn't see. Yeah, you couldn't see who it was. You just saw her in the mirror, like, and it looked like for just a moment, like she was yelling at someone or arguing with somebody. And Nora, can we, uh, ooh, is there any mail that we could look at? Um, there I is no male not. laying on the front steps okay. or any okay. way. Would you like to go and like look at the mailbox? Let's yeah, just knock like, on the door. I want to knock. Okay. You knock on the door. Um, and, uh, a short moment passes and then the woman answers the door with wide eyes and you see that she is quite small and frail looking. Oh, oh no. Hello. Is it the woman we saw arguing or is it another woman? It is. It's her. She's just, so we hi, say, hello, yeah. um, I am, I am Annabella. These are my two friends. I'm so sorry to be. Do you know Daryl? Knocking on your door. Daryl? Yeah, do, you, do you know Daryl? Daryl is my, he's my husband. Why? Um, we were walking today and, and we saw him be, atta be attacked oh. and now he is in the hospital. Oh, oh, no. And she just sort of like wanders back into the house and you see her kind of plop down on the sofa. We and go like, in and kind help of her. like hold her in her head like, oh. We oh. go in. Yeah, we need to we're go like, in. Let, let's get you some tea. We water, water, water. Yeah. yeah. Okay, she's like now drinking the water. And you say you found him? Or you yeah. saw him get, get attacked? Yeah. By who? Well, that's what's strange. Is he no, okay? No. He, he's I, have to go. I, have, I have to go see him. I have to go. It's not I visiting to... hours. You yeah, should they're not going tomorrow. to let you. We already went there and they wouldn't let us in. Oh. But maybe because I'm his wife. We. They No family. Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh. So maybe because of the HIPAA laws and stuff, you can get more info. There wasn't nope. HIPAA in There wasn't HIPAA. Uh -huh. um, so we can, actually, you can do whatever you want. Um, now, um, what is your name? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 uh, uh, I'm Lori. Lori, it's nice to meet you. Yes. And you're Daryl's wife? That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. when, when was the last time you saw Daryl? Well, th this morning when he left for the shop. And, and what does Daryl do? He runs a store. A general um, store. A general store. Just down the block. We did he did he mention anything about having an appointment to get his cards read? Um no, no. Well, I, I didn't know he went in for that sort of thing. Did he seem strange? Like scared or anything off? Uh, well, um, Wait, I, I really don't know. Like, well, because you, you, you know, they told us to go to the police and we came here first. Um, why do you think that they're telling us to go to the police? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, Daryl, Daryl was starting to think that um, someone uh, had it in for him. Did he have any Ooh. idea who it was? No idea, but, um, well, a couple nights ago, um, he woke me up in the middle of the night, uh, just swinging his arms and screaming. And, uh, well, well, when I got the light on, um, uh, he, um, he said someone had been on top of him trying to, trying to strangle him. 
Did he have any idea who it was? No, no, uh, he didn't. And, uh, and I didn't see anyone there. I, I, uh, would I you maybe... mind? Would you mind if we checked out the room where that happened? Could we just go take a look? My friend Nastia here is sort of um, she's trained. She's trained yeah. in in she's like detective in, work. Yes, reading these kinds of situations. Yeah. If you know what I mean, ma'am. I, uh, I I I don't know. I, I maybe you should leave. I, I really should uh, go see about Daryl. Do you have any family that you can go stay with so you're not alone? Okay. When you say that, uh, Annabella, you may make a psychology roll. Okay. And where's my psychology number? It's in the thingy. Um, oh, yeah, it's in that oh, list of skills. Shit. What is it? What is your psychology rating? Um, my total was eight, and my psychology is ten. Damn. You rolled an eight? That's what it says, but it doesn't really make sense. You rolled a zero eight. No. It says one. It says one seven, but that's last time it said one seven. It was seventeen, so I don't know why it oh, said eight, right. So, nine. so remember when you're using the dice roller, just like whatever the number you see with the two dice, then right, you right, rolled a right, seventeen. Right. I rolled. So a you rolled seven over. Again. So you failed it. You failed it, but that's okay. Um, would someone else like to make an attempt? Because I think that um, I have a fifty-one. Okay, great, great. Nora, what I do you have? have? I have a forty-five. Should okay, I you? so nasty. Yeah. All right. I rolled a 25. Very good. Um, you succeed, Nastia. When Annabella asks if she has any family, you notice that Lori like very quickly says, no, no, mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, he's, I'm all he has. Um, but like the way she says no made you think family is a sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lori. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Um, um, wait, so Lori, so Lori, you're okay if we go to the police and tell them what happened? I, uh, I'm going to the police. You, that won't be necessary. You, you ladies are bystanders. You need not um, uh, trouble yourselves any longer. I, I, I don't well, want to be a burden. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? No, no, I. I mean, I hope not. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried about my husband. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura, did you roll psychology? No. Nope. You had Should an I? opportunity. You could if you would like. Yeah. I have a 45 psychology, okay. and I just rolled a 65. So uh, don't worry about it. You uh, notice the same thing that they do, that family is a touchy subject for her. Um yeah, she's trying to usher you out of the house, but mm -hmm. um, you may you may allow her to. Or you can go to the, the police. She's telling you that she's going to go to the police. You, it's no, not necessary for you to do that. What would you like to do here? What do you want to do? I just don't try. I just think something's up. My ting I'm tingling, and I don't think I she's do to be trusted or she's in no. danger. I'm not sure. No, something's obviously going on with her family situation. Nora, do you know any of Daryl's friends? I think we need to, like, talk to someone else. Wait, do we ask her who she was arguing with and say that we saw her, that, like, who else is in the house? I just, I mean, we can't. I don't think she's going to answer. She's, like, already lying. Is there um, so I guess we could say, is there someone in the house? We could well, go around back and peek in more windows. You could do that. You absolutely could. Well, she's going to call somebody. Like if we, you know, it's yeah. like we could okay, like. Unless you do like, something okay, now, she is ushering you out of the house. Okay. Okay. She's ushered you out. Okay. Um, and so, um, but she is also leaving the house. She is rushing yeah. to the police station and ah. to the hospital. So if you would like to, you could keep sneaking around her house, looking in windows. Well, I want to wait and make sure she actually leaves to okay, go very good. to um, the police. Well, yeah, should we nope. follow her or should we go in the house? What's more valuable? Because what if she's going somewhere else? That's a good question. Yeah. How are what we going like to do? How are we going to follow her? Just quietly? By foot? I don't know. Bicycles? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're back in the hood. We're back in the hood. Let's grab Annabella's car. Uh, we are. Great. 
you grab her. So, so, so you're leaving her house. You're leaving Lori and Daryl's house right now. And you're going over to Annabella's shop and grabbing Annabella's car. And where are you going? Oh, We're by the way, follow. you did watch Lori and she eventually uh, got into an old model T Ford and tick, 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 headed off down the road to, uh, uh, ostensibly the the police department and uh but now and, uh, you're right school. let's stay at the house yeah, we we're right. Right. You're right. Right. i don't we think we gotta go get the yeah. car we gotta yeah. um we got you're right okay 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 so maybe let's look in the windows and okay. no, let's I get would, in let's get a well, back door we don't let's know if in. someone's in there i'd like to see if that person's still inside before we go in okay okay here's what you can do make listen rolls and What's if that? uh if you uh, make your listen roll you'll know whether someone's inside, and if you fail it, you won't know. I have a 65 for listening. Okay. Uh, I had a 40, and I rolled a 39. Nicely done. I'm over. Me too. I can't roll good this round. That's okay, because Nastia made her roll, and you hear nothing but silence coming from the house, Nastia. Okay. Yeah, it's what I. This woman is nuts, or there's ghosts. Like I knew no one was there. I, okay, well, I want to go see the bedroom because we asked her that, and she yeah, said, "Yeah, could also should, be a comatose person, you know, like psycho." We should, or... we should um try and get inside the house through a yeah. window. Okay. Door. I love this. Now we're getting really. Now we're breaking and entering. Yeah. So, um, uh, what are you trying? Tell me. Are you trying a window? Are you trying the back door? There is a back door. If you kind of hop door. the, if you hop the fence into the backyard. Can I pick the lock with a little bobby pin. <laughs> sure. Um, where? Which are you going? Front door, back door, back window? Door. I don't want people to see back door. Okay. You all. Um. If you're all going, you all climb over the fence into the backyard. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of your version of army crawl up to the back door. And uh, Nora, do you have any locksmith skill? One. Okay. Well, one is not very good. My one too. Oh, Damn. mine's only one. Oh, okay. So you got all the way to the back door. Well, I guess you should just try the door. Oh, yeah. We'll see. just open it. Um, it yeah, open? when you try the doorknob, you see that it is open. Uh, in the <laughs> 1920s, people didn't always lock all of their doors. Right. Um, and so you're now looking into the uh, small uh, but functional kitchen. And uh, you say that you would like to go to the back bedroom. Mm -hmm. It's a small house, one story and easily found. And you are now um, inside the bedroom of Lori and Daryl Dressler. And um, it, again, tidy. Um, looks like it is shared by a man and a woman, um, and dark because you haven't turned on any lights. Let me know if you do that. Um, or if you're using some sort of lamp or does anybody have in their inventory, something to create light? Um, I have, I have candles matches. right now. I don't, I have matches. Oh yeah. And we said that Nastia has candles and I think that is on her sheet. So you guys can light it. On the sheet. By the way, I, I have a that. car also. I have a car. Yeah, you have a oh, you have wow. a car. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. All car. right. No, I forgot I had a car. Just in all up. streams, the car becomes the most important thing. Everybody's like, "Do we have a car? Um, what car are we driving in?" I don't think we should turn the. Well, no, we don't want someone to know we're inside, so I don't think we should turn the no light. light. Yeah. Um. Can Nastia do some Ouija? stuff inside this house of course she can if she'd like nastia you want to ouija anything um yeah let's see if we can find his stuff or some stuff or clues to like strengthen the okay. communication can we look in every room to make sure there is no one act oh she was just talking to the air i that's wild um yeah you you don't see anybody or hear anybody in the house okay. so are you searching room by room like uh yeah, we need we, to make sure no one's maybe here. like in the closet. Well, I would I wouldn't even mind like looking at paperwork, getting something. It's also dark though. Or do we light the candles? Yeah. You said you lit a candle. So you're all in your friend Daryl and his wife's house who you just met with a candle lit, digging through their personal paper. Yeah. So let's get a um, personal item and then let's Ouija. Great. Um, yeah. So why don't you all give me um 
let's see. If you're going through like uh, old papers, then you could roll accounting or library use. If you are digging through, let me know what you want to do. This is important. If you're like digging through like drawers and cabinets, then you could give me spot hidden. I have um, a really high library library use. Maybe I have you should look through their accounting. old papers. You could look through the papers with accounting, uh, Nora, if you'd like. I rolled over. <laughs> I rolled I under. Okay, Fine. Great. okay. Um, great. Um, Nora, you see that there is a regular charge uh, to a nearby pharmacy, uh, you know, on Daryl's sort of insurance every, uh, every month for some sort of um, drug. Doesn't say what drug. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it does have a name it's called, but, but you don't recognize it. It's kind of a weird, uh, it's a weird name and, uh, it's, it's mainly just a charge to a pharmacy. It looks like they, uh, and it's kind of expensive. That's why you notice it. It's not like Tylenol for sure. Okay. Um, and, uh, what, let's see what else, uh, or is someone just digging through drawers? Is someone, well, I, I would also still Ouija. Like it, I don't, well, you can I, absolutely Ouija. Would Nastia like to kind of try to contact right. spirits here? Let's do it. Okay. Nastia. Uh, Sorry, Nastia. I don't mean to like treat you like a damn animal. Yeah. Am I, am I looking for second sight right now? That's right. You're going to try your second sight here. Ouija for me. I got 25. <laughs> Nicely done, Nastya. Nastya, I am going to, with your 25 roll, I'm going to tell you that you do not sense the presence of a spirit here at all, hmm. which is, which is really kind of puzzling to you because you saw her talking to somebody. Maybe so, she has a disorder and split personality. Yeah. Let's maybe we. Sh what's that pill for? Is there anyone that we could find out? Oh, d can't we go to the pharmacy? Uh, the I bet it's closed. Is it closed? <laughs> um. Well, you could go the next day. You know, it's okay to let like a night and a elapse, a like go home and sleep. I mean, like yeah, Daryl's not going anywhere, right? Right. Yeah, I still right. would like to talk to someone that knows Daryl. Other than Lori, too. So uh, let's just, we'll go to the pharmacy tomorrow or maybe ask a doctor. Like, we just need to find out who this pill, like, what this pill is. We don't need to go to a pharmacy for that. Other people might have the info. Oh, we could go to the pharmacist's house. Yeah, I'm, yeah or, you guys yeah. You guys have a friend who's a pharmacist right. that we established in the that. first game we ever played. Yeah. We did? Who? Yeah, the pharmacist. We visited him because he told us about the hair gel. That's right. In the first oh, game we ever right. played. Uh, which is canon, but uh, it was it not. It didn't happen on the stream. Uh, hair gel was an extremely important uh, part of the storyline. Um, so, uh, and you had it identified. You you found this strange goop in a house, and you had it identified by a pharmacist who told yeah. you, "Oh, it's a type of uh, hair fixative." Yeah. Um, so, um, would you like to go and talk to your uh, friend Tim? Yeah. Who works. Yeah. So uh, once again, because I think you did this the first time we played, you wake him up in the middle of the night, <laughs> and he's like, uh, he's friend. like, uh, Tim's kind of a friend with benefits. <sighs> oh come on, really, guys? I can't. Uh, I'm sorry, time. people. We'll the make people it worth are your while. Me. We'll make it worth your while, Tim. All right, It'll, you'll be fine. Is that a dick sucking thing? No, it's like we're fun. Nora works at a bar. I'll give you a clock. We'll hook you up, Tim. Just be there, cool. Yeah, it's not even dick. I'll give you my not my musket, but something. My bag of groceries <laughs> once Daryl gives it to me. <laughs> we are never getting paid for this job. No, we're getting those groceries. <laughs> um, okay, so um you uh you are you're asking him to identify the drug on the paper, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, he tells you that it looks like it's a kind of a low dose. He's like, all right, but then like, can I please just go to bed? Of course. Let me take a look. He no, we're going to keep you awake forever. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's being, now he's being dramatic. Honestly, maybe you won't get a clock. <laughs> Nora, are you working this Friday? Oh, wow. Tim, I'll get you my <laughs> schedule when you get me the information. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fine. Um, yeah, I, it's a, like a barbiturate. It's like a low dose. It's not. It's not super. What's crazy. a barbiturate? Uh, like, it makes ooh. people sleep. It like calms them down. Oh, I thought it was the opposite. I thought it was barbiturates for like speed. So it's like no, a little. No, it's like, it, a little, it, um, it's like a baby Xanax or something. Uh, yeah, Xanax doesn't exist in this time period, but um. <laughs> He's kind of like, yeah, I mean, they use it as like kind of a very strong sedative. Okay, okay. so he's taking a sleeping pill. Or Lori is. Well, okay. yeah. But, but it's I not mean, shady. None of this is shady. Not yeah, that we tell so this we, is shady, but there's okay, no crazy. Then, bye. <laughs> well, wait. Oh. I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little oh. bit, I mean, it's not really a, just something to help you sleep. I mean, like, this would be like something they would give out in like, I don't know. A sanatorium or something for a psycho, you know, someone who was like, you know, coochie coo in the head. And why would they give that out to them? Sleep therapy to chill them out, right? Take well, a actually, snack. They, <laughs> but you said well, it's a low dose. Well, but I mean, it's like it's 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 higher than you know just to like take a nap. It's like mm. you know something to kind of keep you low key. Okay. 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 All right. So Lori's talking to some people. Okay. Um, do you, pres can you tell us who you prescribe that to in town? I mean, uh, almost nobody that no, yeah. no one. Is there another pharmacist in town or not? Oh, I mean, it might've been my shop. I just, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with this prescription, but like, <laughs> okay, I okay. thought you meant how many people do we give it to? Yeah. This, as far as I know, this is probably the only one. I mean, you know, uh, do you know these a, people though? Like, do you know, um, Daryl and Lori? Do you like something's up? We're trying to help them. Yeah, the no, death, no, death, yeah, I don't know everyone that lives in Arkham, Massachusetts. <laughs> God, this gal, wow, you you're a, a spitfire. You're a spitfire. Him. Don't you have a record of your prescriptions? Like, we just want to know if this was prescribed to Daryl. Yeah, are you giving, are you, are you, are you, are you know you, what? I do have a record of my prescriptions, but I'm not going to the shop in the middle of the night to look up my prescription records, okay? <laughs> like, look, I have to be up early. I'm a pharmacist. My yeah, job but two is minutes important. ago, you're flirting okay. with Nora, and now okay. you have no interest in, per, you know, no, showing we, off. I'm sorry. It, we woke you up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're sorry. Meet me at the pharmacy <laughs> tomorrow, and I'll look up the the. the I'll, All right. I'll Great. Do it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> He's pissed. <laughs> Listen, have to fuck him. <laughs> maybe I'm being a little too aggressive with everyone, but I feel like something is off and someone is being abused. And like, it's, we just, it sucks. Okay, I don't so even this, like Daryl. This is what we know. <laughs> someone is taking a pill that they give out at insane asylums. Lori is talking to people that aren't there. Daryl got attacked by a being and at some point has also been stabbed and choked and he said he was and being burned choked, and cho he said he was being choked in the middle of the night and Lori said no one else was there and there's a man with big lips oh a hat with big lips that is everything you know really nicely done and so <laughs> um any one of those is maybe a lead for you to follow did yeah. Lori have big lips is there any way the man no, in the hat Lori did not have was, big lips if i would say if anything frail. she had a lack of lips yeah <laughs> okay so maybe <laughs> Why? you guys have already Why had great Oh, did was Nastia not able to roll high enough to, for us to Ouija back at the house? Is that what happened? We did. I just didn't feel anything. Oh. We, there was there was an absence which was very strange to her. Like someone had cleansed the space almost even. Maybe oh, wow. or maybe Nastia. Sometimes there's just nothing there. If a place isn't yeah. haunted, there's just nothing there. Okay, Daryl, Daryl, fuck. What are, but she could have argued with the ghost and the ghost follow her out. And you can't read Daryl's cards when we're not with him. Make an occult no. roll when you think about that, Nastia. You guys are all talking. You're in, uh, you're in, uh, what kind of car do you have there, Annabella? A cutlass. Oh, you have a cutlass. <laughs> so you're all in, you're all in Annabella's that cutlass. That's type of car. I thought it was no, a weapon. No, that's from a, the Civil War. I don't have, a cutlass was like in the 70s, I think. What do I have? Yes. I yeah. think it's a cop car. No, I don't have a cop car. I thought you had a T Ford. 
That's what I have. All right. You know what? Uh, I just decided to change my mind. The Irish cop <laughs> is driving you everywhere this adventure. Um, yes. I don't know why it's happening. Maybe it's not totally logical, but he's like, oh, where do you girls need to go to now? This is uh, why we're doing it, because you want to do your Irish accent for are, the next hour. Yeah, but I'm happy to have an old uncle help us out. I All right. Know. You're you a good cop, what? right? You You're know what cop. sucks? I had to roll under 75 and I rolled 87. Okay, would you like to push the roll? I don't know what Pushing that means. means you roll again, but if you roll poorly, something bad happens to you. And you'd have to tell me how you're trying harder on the roll. Um, I'm more focused on getting a lower number. Um, yeah. No, I don't mean how you, Lisa, <laughs> are trying harder. I mean how your character is trying harder. So when your character starts thinking about ghosts and how they work and why there you know she thought there would be a ghost there and then she tried her second sight and she didn't detect anything she probably has to go and research look at her old occult yeah. books and yeah, things like that books, so books, yeah. if you want to stay up all night researching i will for the group. okay then i will allow you to roll again i'm gonna research all night fuck yeah i got a 72 Woo! okay we'll get you some witch coffee <laughs> So, um, <laughs> according to your old tomes on spiritualism, um, there are certain people who are psychics who um, can channel spirits, right? They can bring spirits to them. But other than that, a spirit is tied to a place. So, if you did not sense a spirit there, there is no spirit in that house. But perhaps this woman is uh, also gifted, right? Right. I mean, just it's just a guess that you're having. She's also gifted, and it, it, she's channeling something. She's summoning spirits or something like that. So Lori could, okay, Lori could be summoning a ghost to, like, kill Daryl. Yeah. We but need to see if she's in the hospital being yeah. nice to him or not. Um, we don't know. We should go and see if she actually went to the hospital. And how dare or do we it. could go to the police that we're with the cop. The cop could take us to the police station, at least tell us if she filed a complaint. No, that's true. Let's do that. Very good. Um, I'm going to do that quickly. I'm not going to make you make a bunch of charm rolls. You go to the police station and it is a matter of public record. It takes you maybe an hour to kind of get through the red tape, but they tell you that yes, Lori filed a complaint. Um, she went to the hospital first, found out what had happened and uh, said that her husband uh, had told her that he suspected he was being hunted or someone was trying to hurt him and that uh, now he is in the hospital very badly injured. So okay. would you like to go to the hospital now? You said maybe you were going to go to the hospital and check on Daryl. Well, uh, now I trust Lori a little more. Well, I don't know because if Lori is summoning something, I, I, I like she could be trying to frame someone. She was weird. Something in her family is weird too. Like, oh, is there yeah. any way we can find out, like go to the live, like Lori's maiden name and maybe her family history? Um, yes, uh, that's an interesting uh, tack. Um, let's see. Um, it, it's going to be tough uh, at the library because you just have a name, Lori yeah. Dressler, and you know her appearance. So if you can think of another way that you might ask around about someone, you can do that. Um, I mean, I own a shop. Mm -hmm. Do people like... Would you like to spend a few days just sort of asking around about her? You live in the same neighborhood that they live in. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Are they then, Annabella or all of us? Well, it was Annabella's idea. So oh, let's yeah. see how Annabella does. Um, okay. So a couple days are going to pass gonna because it's not something again. that you can just like go around and, you know, ask everybody, you know, like in one day, like if they've heard mm -hmm. of this woman, you're just kind of asking every customer that comes into the shop. Um, hey, just, you know, are you, do you know the couple that lives on Sentinel, like such and such, uh, and you're going to give me a charm roll and don't <laughs> tell me what you got yet. Do, does, um, does, uh, does Nastya or Nora want to do something while, um, Annabella is sort of running her shop and making that inquiry over the next couple of days? Well, I'm reading my occult witch books and I have to take care of my daughter. 
Right. Okay. So you're taking care of your daughter. And um, let's see, how can I have you roll your power? Roll your power. Your power is uh, your willpower. It's P-O-W on your sheet. It's, it's your soul. It's your force of will. And we'll see how well you're parenting. Um, I My power is 80 and I got a 26. You may go ahead and you may add a point of sanity. You are just doing a fantastic job of raising your 10 year old daughter. Wow. Over these oh. days. Oh. Yeah. And, it, and it, you're doing so well that like at one point she like hugs you and goes, I love you, mom. Wow. Um, That's important. That's important. What's and, her name uh, again, uh, Nastia? Olivia. I call Olivia. her Nuba, but she's Olivia. Olivia. And uh, uh, Nora, do you want to do anything? Do you want to? Check on Daryl. Well, I, Do you I, wanna... I work? Can I work a couple shifts at the bar and I see some of Daryl's friends and yeah. kind of do a little flipping around that way? Hey, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Um, and you know, you see the guy that he, money. I'm not like I can't. The guys that he drinks with. Books. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, how, how are you going to ask them about it? What are you going to sit? What what tactic are you going to use? Well, if I'm like, oh, did you guys hear about Daryl? Huh? What's up? I haven't seen Daryl in a couple days. What was he like the last time you saw him? Ah, jeez. This guy's name's Chad, by the way. What? In 1922? Chadwick. 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 Bozeman. Ooh. <laughs> no, he's this guy's white and a douchebag. Um, Boo! No, but sorry, but hear, it's true. Can't wait to hear his story. Um. So uh, let's see. He's like. Uh, Daryl's been doing great. I mean, uh, he, you know, the, the, the shop's turning over a profit. Uh, he just got married to that fine little lady and, uh, he's paying his mortgage. I mean, uh, the guy has a little extra over to come down here and have fun with us. Uh, yeah, Daryl's doing fantastic. Wait, now you just said that he got married to a fine little lady and he's definitely married to a frail old ass woman. So is she having her like you sucked out of her by a spirit or something? Oh, uh, well, I guess that this guy just has uh, Weird taste. poor eyesight <laughs> or I didn't think that she looked grotesque, but I, well, I don't know. You said when she came to the door that she was old Clint, and frail. Clint, can we see her face? I said she was small and frail. frail. I didn't say that she was like. I heard the uh, word old and you, the way you did her voice. like oh, Lori Dressler is quite things. attractive, Kara. <laughs> um, well, listen, there's also, you've met men that's like. Say, describe a woman as hot that you're like, oh, I must be thinking of someone else. <laughs> How did your charm roll go? My charm a, that woman is unattractive to you? No, she's cute. I could see how Chad thinks she's a hot babe. Yeah. By the way, well, I'm not even going to tell you who that she really looks is. Gay. Okay. She okay. is not. Well, I can't wait she, to get into Not that. that it would matter, but she is not. Okay. Um, um, my charm roll went. She works gay. I'm over it. <laughs> Okay, your charm what roll didn't go well. No, I'm, I, I no, I, I mean, I, I rolled under. I rolled. I oh, was great. I got over. Um, so you just kind of gossip with the ladies in the neighborhood, yeah. and finally, an old lady uh, named Lorna tells you that um, oh, the Dressler wife, mm, mm -hmm. she's one of the Pickerings. Oh, who are the Pickerings? Oh, yeah, the name Pickerings, is Pickerings are a, a very very wealthy family in Arkham. Um, mm. They live uh, in a She's very- She's a pickering? Let me, let me chat with my old bitty bitch. She's a pickering. <laughs> I can't She's wait. a pickering. And uh, she doesn't know the story, but there was some falling out. She's their youngest. There was some falling out in that family. And that's why she's been exiled down to the middle classes with the rest of us. How much for this carnival glass? For you? Um... 75. Okay. 75. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lorna, my husband is dead. You want to take the roof over my head too? All right. I'm just going to save up for it for a couple months. Okay. In the twenties, that's like you know so much money. <laughs> <laughs> Nora, um, okay. do I come down to your bar and tell you? No. Um, that's like, I'm like cigarettes. $25 okay, so, back. <laughs> no, Lorna, I'm sorry. You know what? A, oh, early Christmas. How about we'll do uh, 12? 
twelve dollars from seventy five. Everybody made me feel bad. <laughs> well, I gave you that little tidbit. I mean, you did. I, I bet you're looking you know, into this for one of your cases. Yes, I am. So I think I should pay eight. Lorna, I just came down so. Okay, do you have any other news? Anything else? Was there uh, what do the pickerings look like? Are there are there any oh, men in I it with really plump? There was there was some talk that the girl had been in a hospital for a while. The Lori girl? Lori. Oh, yep, men, I knew for, men, for mental. Mm -hmm. What does the dad look like? Her father? Yeah, Mr. Pickering. I think he's passed. But they still have that big old house up in Eastville. Eastville. You can't miss it. It's three stories, and it looks like it's got towers on the side of it. Kind of an ostentatious display, if you ask me. So nine, then? You know what? You can have it for eight. You are the sweetest <laughs> thing. <laughs> All <laughs> right. All right. You, you know I'm going to want a fruitcake for Christmas. And so, you know you're gonna get one. Okay. Can we hop in my car and go to Eastville Comedy Club? No, <laughs> no. no. The neighborhood, not the comedy club. Eastville, can the you, neighborhood, and we, uh, I was kidding. I was kidding. Can we just drop my daughter off at the sitter before we go? Yes. Sure. God. Yes. Mother of the year. <laughs> Old Eastern European woman watches your daughter. She rarely speaks. Yeah. And smokes the whole time. Does she know the Pickerings? Can you ask um, her? She <laughs> does not. Okay. Are you going to the Pickering house? Um, I I yeah, we are. Yeah. Wait, what are we going to find at the Pickering house? Let's see if there's photos of the guy, the big-lipped guy with a hat. I'll be able to recognize him. Well, we could also go look up the Pickerings in like the in like a newspaper machine. Microfiche. Microfiche. I love those. Well, there not wouldn't be any microfiche. microfiche at the time. Microfiche in 1922 is probably not, yeah. But there would be perhaps a newspaper morgue at the Arkham Library. Let me know where you'd like to go. Would you yeah, like to go to the There's got to be a lot of info. They're I just like up. to go to their house. Can't we get Nastia to do another reading there? There's got to be something up. Oh, the Pickering house. are just going to, we're just going to go into this. The yeah. guy's dead. And he said they still have that house up there. But so if we could, I want to. Yeah, my vote is morgue. I want to be as prepared as possible before yeah. we go in there, and I'd like to do some research first. Okay, yeah. well, my bio says that I like taking risks, so whatever. <laughs> well, in that case, if you would like, you can you can go off on That's your own, good. Nora. Yeah. Or you can stay in solidarity with. That. We stick okay. together. You're gonna go to the public library then. It's on the way. The Pickerings. Oh, fine. And you're gonna look at old. Old editions of the Arkham Advertiser for information about the Pickerings. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my okay. hometown newspaper was called the Advertiser. Well, aren't, well, you, aren't you happy we came now? <laughs> give me a library use role. Me? Uh, no. um, I think that Annabella oh, okay. will be doing this. Who? Annabella. Great. Fuck. I rolled over. Would you like to push it? Yes. Um, and roll again? Bum, yes, but whatever you will be doing, you'll be spending a lot of time there. You'll be working very yeah. hard. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm willing to put in the work there. Okay, great. Um, oh, I'm going to rule that. I'm going to rule that Nastia and Annabella. Oh no, no, Nastia got her second role, so she didn't get exhausted by her all night occult research. Let's see if Annabella kind of gets exhausted by her uh, her newspaper um, search. How did it go the second time? Okay. Yes, I got under. 44. Okay, great. Um, you, uh, What confuses you oh boy. is that uh, there is a lack of any kind of information about Lori Pickering, okay. but there's a lot about the other Pickerings. The Pickerings have uh, six children, two uh, older boys uh, and, and um, uh, four daughters. And the first three daughters, big marriage announcements. In the Arkham Advertiser. And for the boys, too. Big marriage announcements. And the boys are kind of, you know, they're in the news a bit. Like, you know, when they, like, cut the ribbon on a new business that they've opened. Or one of them's kind of running for a local office. Like, but Lori is not in any mm. articles. And her marriage 
to Daryl Dressler was not announced. Well, the do you thing, think it's like embarrassing because he's like a grocer and she's from this big family? Like, or he runs a general store. That's like, he must not be in the same like level. Yeah, there's her. gotta be something else though. Are there any, photo are there there any photos? Her. Are there any photos of anyone in the Pickering family? Um, there are, there's photos of, of some of them. And um, they look like, uh, you can see a little bit of family resemblance with Lori, but they look like, you know, um, uh, an aristocratic 1920s waspy. They got uh, thin lips. They, they all got have thin lips. lips. They got thin, thin fucking lips, lips man. Is, Lori, is Lori in any of the other photos or articles outside of wedding announcements? Um, there is um, a there is a, a old photo um, from a big uh, New Year's bash that the Pickerings threw uh, at a you know a, a ballroom at the Arkham Hotel. Uh, they sort of kind of paid for it and hosted this big party uh, as part of one of their son's you know political ambitions. And you see uh, Lori uh, when she's a bit younger, like way over in one corner. Um, and unlike everybody else, he's like, she's like way over in one corner, like staring she, out at you through the oh newspaper. Boy. Okay. Is there any chance she's like a bastard kid and they don't like her or is she just witchy and, or like mental? I, I, maybe she's a little bit insane. Uh, yeah. I'm wondering if we should try and go to a, the mental institution and get some dirt on Lori. Well, not dirt. I didn't mean that like info. Sorry. That's okay. It could be dirt. It could be info. But even if your kid's a little crazy, are you really going to shun them fully? I just... It does seem quite extreme, doesn't it? Um, where would people like to go? You've got lots of leads. Wait, is there any photos of a big-lipped man with a hat? There are none. None at all. Wow. Maybe her. that's her real father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that the man that you saw in your vision, Nastia, looked young. But with a ghost, that could mean Anytime. usually young when they died, right? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it didn't look like an old face under that uh, shadowy cap. Weird. Um, all right. She's, I so, wonder if she saw something on that New Year's party. Should we go to the ballroom? Because if she saw a ghost, like maybe that weird face is because she saw something there. Oh, so you think you think she has like PTSD as opposed to like personality disorder? I didn't think that, but I love that, and that's a good idea too. Um, or you I, won't find out until you go somewhere and look. Yeah, what should we I, do? I, I'm like, stop. I I feel like I would want to go to the. I mean, can we go to the hospital yet? Is Daryl better? You may go check on Daryl. Yeah, I asked you if you wanted to do that, and okay. you did go. Hold on. Another question. Um, is there any, you know, there's so many of the family members and all these photos. Did any of them ever come to the bar? Do we know, or the shop? Oh, like, the, does anyone look familiar? Yeah. Um, you do recognize the mother. You recognize, uh, you recognize Augusta Pickering. She okay. has been into the shop once uh, oh, and shop. kind of looked at things like this. Uh do you remember her, Annabella? Well, yeah, I'm sure I would because it's a really pretty shop, and anyone who does that, I get angry about. Yeah. So and I remember up her nose while she was there. Yeah, she seemed like one of those snooty Eastfield ladies. Do we remember what she was looking for when she was in the shop? Like, was she looking for a specific type of antique? <sighs> um, she was just kind of going in when the shop was very new. That's all you know. A lot of people came through and you remembered like being excited because you're like, ooh, I'm getting some of Arkham's, you know, money I in my shop. But then but, they didn't come back. It sounds and she like. didn't buy anything and she kind of turned up her nose at everything and made a face. Is there um, any chance I read cards for anybody or done any witch work for anyone? Not for the Pickerings. No, but they. But for Daryl you have. But for Daryl you have. Yeah. For but I, do think, I think we should go visit Daryl. We got to go somewhere. We yeah. got to go visit Daryl. Okay. okay, very that's good. My, that's my vote. You are at uh, the hospital, uh, and um, you uh, come to where that uh, nurse is again, and she's like, "Hi, ladies." Hi. 
Hey, up um, again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm sorry, you know, it's not it's not visiting hours right. And I want a spot hidden from anybody who would like to, to do one. All right, mine, I, have, I have only 25. Mine's 65. Great, and mine's 45. I'll roll, and Meg, Annabella, you wanna roll? I went over. Oh, okay, I'm rolling. 69. Fuck, I got 99. Way over. We're having tough rolls. Okay, um, no problem. So she's sitting there talking to you and saying, you know, I'm sorry, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not, um, it's not visiting hours and it's just not, you know, if you can't came back in like two hours, like, uh, so do you want to get past her in some way? Two hours. Yeah. Cause I thought this time we checked and we went back at visiting hours. Is she that's a good point. You know what? That's that's a good point, Nora. You would have checked. You would have come back at visiting hours. Yeah. So Thanks, this woman's Nora. just very being very efficient, and she goes, "Okay, it's visiting hours now." Yes, thank you. Yeah, you can go back. Thank you. Okay, um, so we have a dumb <laughs> You go into where Daryl's room is uh, here in the um, in the emergency slash you know uh, critical care wing. And the first thing you notice when you go into his room, which was kind of right behind over the shoulder of the nurse you were talking to, and she kept you there for like five minutes being so irritating. Uh, and um, you finally go into his room and you notice a pillow is over his face. Oh my God, is he breathing? Okay, pull the pillow off. You pull the pillow off, he is not breathing. Okay, does anyone know CPR? Yeah, the fucking um, nurses. <laughs> oh yeah, CPR. Suddenly, um, some nurses run in and they're like, "Oh my god!" And they um, like uh, start rolling their first aid. Oh, that one rolled a ninety-two. Let's see if this nurse can get it. That one rolled a twenty-three. Uh, and uh, 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 and suddenly, well, he he doesn't like he's like in like a full body cast. So suddenly, he's like. <sighs> I want to ask him who did the who who tried to kill you. <sighs> Nurse, who did you let in here? How did a pillow? No one, get no one is allowed back here. It wasn't visiting hours. So no. was it you? <laughs> no, Daryl, 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 Daryl. Hello, who hurt Daryl? Who did this? A young man. Uh, 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 and then he passes out. Young man with big lips. And the nurses said no one was in there, so it was a spirit. Oh, yeah. And actually now, like, you know, pretty soon they have a cop in there, and they're asking you how you found him. And all, you know, the doctors, there's like a big hubbub. Like, um, there's no reason that he should have lost respiration. His, his, his injuries were like to his arms and his internal organs, not to his lungs or whatever. There's no reason he should have stopped breathing. Well, yeah. Also, we saw the pillow. Right. Mm. Okay. Oh, let's, um, should we, we, should I just weed you or will the nurse that's what I was, let us? I was, that's what I was wondering. Well, it'll be, they probably won't. And actually they're trying to get rid of you again. So do you want to give it a shot? Do you want to give it a shot? Yes. Okay. Give me your second sight roll. And basically, Nastia is like, you, you know, you guys Yay, are distracting the six. cops. Oh, right. okay. A six. Oh, excellent. Okay. So in that case, I am going to, again, like you feel it, but it feels cold, Nastia. It's not, it's not like bright and like fiery and like hot and like passionate like when the the ghost is in the room it's a it's a post cognition again and you see a man in ragged clothes a young man in ragged clothes like holding the pillow over daryl's face holding it down over daryl's face holding it down and then you hear your own voice and you hear nora and annabella's voices and the man just fades away and uh, for seeing that gruesome murder and a weird vision of a man disappearing, I want a sand roll for Nastya. A sand? Sanity. Your sanity. 
Oh, I never. Okay, I never rolled to put one in there. There's just it'll be to the left of like not the ninety nine, the one, the other, other one, one. eighty. Okay, yes. eighty. Great. Sanity. Great. Eighteen. Great. Um. Great. So you don't lose any sanity from it. Um. You have confirmed that whatever this phantom is, it was here as well. And now I'm going to tell you, we have about fifteen minutes left in our game tonight. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're going to solve it tonight. Maybe you'll solve it. Maybe we'll have to go to a part two. But I think that if you work hard, you can get a good clue or get closer to the trail before the game ends tonight. So, so we're I, not that close. You got to move fast and because this thing is trying out. to kill people. Yeah, Daryl. And, and we don't He's know who this out. young – we got to figure out who this young ghost is. We got to go to the Pickerings, I guess. But it's none of the Pickerings. That we know maybe it's of. somebody that they all treated badly. That the yeah. Badly. Oh yeah, raggedy clothes, raggedy clothes. Yeah. I'm just so uh, and her her taking these pills and talk like who is she talking to? There's so much. Yeah. There's so much. Should we so try where... to visit Lori again? You could. The girls don't like it. No, I, no, I, I, no would. I'm into Lori. I was thinking there's nothing more the pharmacist can tell us about who he prescribes it for unless it's not Lori. Oh, I'm yeah. Just, we still have to go to the pharmacist. We kind of know it's Lori, I feel like, but we we can go back to the pharmacist if you want. I mean, I think when we say, when, when the neighbor said, oh, she was even in a hospital for a while, I think it's like we know it's Lori probably taking these medications, right? So do you, I, I would be into talking to Lori. Or should we wait and see if is Daryl gonna wake the fuck up? Can I try I, to do a spell? Like, it also wait? seems like every time we go near Daryl, something bad happens. Hold on, I have <laughs> heal. Hold up, you guys. That's true. <laughs> That's not untrue. Girl, <laughs> okay. I have healing herbs and folk remedies. I think once they stabilize him in any way, let me. Why don't I try some of my healing shit on him? Um, I'll allow that. What I want first is for you to. Um, Are you guys down? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's fine. You can do that. Um, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to let you do it. Um, uh, so you're kind of like bringing him around, <laughs> even though he's not supposed to be brought around right now. <laughs> and so he's like, ah, uh, uh, and he can't oh, move. You know, no. he's in like a oh, full boy. body cast. And he's like, ah, oh, Nastya. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. What? Tell us what. We're here to help. You Who is this young who is the young man that is hurting you? Big lips, a hat, the peckerings. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I, was, I, I I think he's a demon or something. He just he appears out of nowhere and he You've never seen him before. He chose you for a reason. Think. At, at first at first it was just like a I, I, someone was watching me, you know, I got that feeling, you know, like when I was working in the shop, but then little things started happening, like money would go missing or did they, my hot coffee would just you know, fall into my lap like someone had swatted it out of my hand. But in the last week, things were getting more serious. Hey, my lighter, it just went off in my pocket and it set my jacket on fire and it burned my back. <laughs> And then he pushed me down the stairs. And suddenly these nurses are like, ladies, oh, he needs to rest. Can we you just... got to find out who's doing it. He's going to kill me. You got to find out. I'm counting on you girls. How oh. can we convince your wife to talk to us? Because this isn't normal ghost behavior. Lori, ghost yeah, Lori, yeah, Lori. In a building. What's going on with Lori? Lori will help you. Lori, Lori will help you. She's a good girl. She'll help you. Just to, to tell her what you need. The, the, there's money taking, in the house, too. She'll pay you. Is She'll she taking you. pills? Is she on pills? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, She's she's got a pill from when she was in the hospital. Yeah. Why'd she have to go to the hospital? It just makes her sleep. I I, 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 I don't know. It's, uh, you know, she said that she used to have a, have a nervous problem. Uh, uh, and then the nurses are like, okay, okay, okay. ladies. Okay. Damn. Okay. He wants us here, nurses. Like he was talking to us. Uh, <laughs> he yells at you. 
This is he just yells so... at you. He yells at you as you're walking out. You guys have you guys have dug deep enough, and you used medicinal herbs to awaken a man who had passed out. So I'll I, he yells one last thing at you as you're leaving. He's like, "Make sure she's taking those pills. Make sure she's taking them." Okay. Okay. So Lori is talking to somebody who is not there. Is Lori not taking the pills and channeling a demon to be? You don't understand. This is really weird because, like, you know, ghosts um, inhabit places. The fact that the spirit is, is going traveling around. all over lighters, the cemetery, the hospital. It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a spirit. This is something different. This okay. So this Nastia, ghost when you say things like that, I will allow you to roll an occult roll. All right. I okay. I keep forgetting what I have on it. Okay, seventy-five. All right, let's do this. Ah, oh, come on, eighty-one. Would you like to spend the rest of the day researching and uh, and try to push it? Yes, I have to. I have to learn all this, and then I can raise my rates. Okay. <laughs> um, she's gonna go off and do that. What do you? Do you guys want to go with her, or do you want to go somewhere else? Well, I well, can study near them, wherever they go. I um, think you can't study while you're like in a car or visiting another location. You got to go to a quiet place, maybe back to your apartment. You gotta, you gotta drop your daughter off at the old the uh, Eastern European lady because <laughs> well, so can you can't Annabella have a ten-year-old running around while you're trying to research the occult. That's not going to work. So can Annabella and I go do something really quick and then meet back up with Nastia? You absolutely may. Um, I like a place where I, I think we could go and get answers about things is, uh, is where Lori was in the mental institution. But Would I you should like to be go there? there. I need to be there. I, right. Right. Well, we, we shouldn't get too caught up in logistics. I just wanted to make it clear <laughs> that you were she just at Arkham Asylum. Wouldn't it just be Arkham like the Sanatorium, of please? We don't yeah. want the DC Arkham. universe to get mad at us. Arkham <laughs> Sanatorium. Arkham Sanatorium. I think so, we should. Sh should we allow Nasia to roll her occult for the rest of the day and then go the next day to Arkham Sanatorium? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very well. Nasia, did you roll your occult again? I did not, and I will do it right now. Roll it a second time. I got a five. Nastia, you research all day in all of your old books, and you even go to like another place where you know you can buy some occult books, and you come across a idea from Theosophy. Theosophy is kind of a weird occult tradition uh, called a tulpa. Have you ever heard of a tulpa? No. A tulpa is a uh, being that a person creates with their mind. There were um, Buddhist monks that said that they could do this, and theosophists say that it is part of their um, their tradition, their occult tradition as well. You create a being out of your mind that can kind of do things that you want to do, travel places you can't go. Wow. Wow. I mean, so Lori is being, like, possessed, or there is something coming or out Or he of could Lori. be schizophrenic. Who? Creating beings with your mind. Oh, you think Daryl's hurting himself? Like there's a curse on him? Yeah. Okay, so now Are you we're going all... to the sanatorium? Yeah. Very good. Um, <laughs> you arrive right. the next day at Arkham Sanatorium bright and early. Um, it's a huge, it's one of those giant old sanatoriums, like, you know, where it's like there's two huge wings and it's mm -hmm. got like a big clock tower type thing in the middle. And uh, who are you talking to? Who are you going to go to? Uh, do um, we know, out of the three of us, do any of us know anyone who works there? I made out with a nurse maybe there. No. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Know. You know oh, what, Nastia? Um, that's a big swing, awesome. but I like it. You didn't make out with a nurse, though. You made out with an orderly. I was going to say I was hooking up with an orderly. Okay, you both were. You guys double dated orderlies. 
<laughs> I was going to say I sold, I sold an antique to the head psychiatrist, but now we've got making out. That's better. Yeah, I think that that's I think that that's a juicy tidbit. So, uh, I'm just going to allow that to be true. Um, and uh, I'm going to say that uh, you see one of the guys that you guys went on a double date with, and he's this kind of like really kind of like you know, scrawny. He's got like, you know, a little bit of a 1920s version of a, like, um, I don't know, like a rocker, you know, like a heroin rocker kind of vibe to him. Mm. You know, he's a little unkempt, but he's an orderly here. Uh, and his name is Clive. Clive. And Clive. Yeah. And Clive that's is my guy. Like, uh, yeah. That's your guy. Yeah. Nora Clive. Nora, okay. Do you want to talk to Clive? Yeah. yeah. Do I have to do a charm or something? No, you can just talk to him. Babe, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey. wondering if you could give me a little bit of info. Uh, do you remember a patient ever being here named Lori Pickering or Lori? Hey, look, lady. I don't have. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not supposed to say things about the patients. In 1922, yeah. I feel like anyone's going to sue you. Hi, when have you ever cared about the rules? Wait a second. Oh, hey, I remember you. Yeah, the garden in Boston, right? Yeah. The speakeasy. Garden. Yeah. The speakeasy. Yeah, yeah. You wait there. Me? Yes. I thought you were talking to Annabella. Jesus, you're no, a I'm, lazy I'm guy, dog. I'm talking to you. We're having a conversation. Oh, it's so funny that the two people who are actually married in this game are like, who are, are you talking to me right now? <laughs> um, you're, I'm sorry. My, okay, my, yes. What do you mean I yeah. went there? We've met. You guys we went, went on a date. Times. We've gone on a yeah, date. You went on a date. Uh, I'm t- hey, do you sorry. need to be committed? Hey. I go on a date with a lot of ladies, okay. okay? You know how you can make it up to us? You can give us some info on Lori Pickering. I don't I don't know who that is. Was there a woman here, very tiny, very little, from a wealthy family, and she's taking barbiturates? Barbiturates. Are you in a play or something? Why are you <laughs> dressed like that? This Listen. is a very fashionable outfit. We have 500 patients here. He, there, by the way, you the caught game? him on a cigarette break. You you can, can, can you get me into the records room for five minutes? No, absolutely not. There's absolutely Could. no reason. Because are you out of your mind? Like I could lose my job. Okay. I love this work. Why? Clive, you're smoking. I like tying people down. Clive seems like a fucking dead end. Why am I talking to this loser? Well, I guess you're going to have to do something to make him do what you want him to do. Clive, what do you want? I have a fucking knife on me and I pull it out and I'm like, Clive, let me into that records room, you little bitch. Wow, Nora, you are a hard woman. Give me an intimidate roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my intimidate is 75. Excuse me. There she is. Nora, Nora Wilkins. 37. Um, he's like, okay, okay. Uh, and you got like the knife against his back. And now he's like walking you in. And he's like, these ladies are visitors. And he's walking you back. And he's like, why do you need these records so bad anyway? You guys are behind him. Yeah, Nora's got the knife to his back. We're trying to help somebody. I'm so sorry that we're having to do this to you. Um, he uh, is reaching for something as you go through the like the little gate past the little like you know locked door that leads into the asylum like wings. Like he's like reaching for something. Hey, what the hell are you reaching for? Um, he is about <laughs> to press a button that's just kind of on the side of the wall. Is this I like a panic? Is I it like a panic a button? Yeah, yeah. Grab it's his probably arm. a panic button. Yeah, grab his arm. Stop him. We gonna, have... Can I break his finger? Well, you <laughs> can all roll a fighting roll to try to stop him from doing this. I cannot believe we're gonna have to fight this piece. Wait, of shit. where's my fighting though? Oh, my fighting! It's at the top in the second. Oh, column. fighting! I'm only twenty-five for I'm that. I'm fifty. I'm fifty. I'm okay. fifty. Yes, thirty-nine. Nineteen. I roll really, on. yeah. You guys like overpower him immediately, and you're like, ah, 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 ah. And now, um, 
this regular orderly is being <laughs> like you've got him in an arm lock, you've got a knife to his back, and for some reason you're taking siege of a mental hospital. Um, this is horribly untoward, but eventually he uh, unlocks the records room for you and lets you in and is like, can I go now? Yes, but if you tell it's anybody, files. if you tell anybody, we will poison every drink you have until you die. Never go to the he party runs. again. <laughs> he runs. Um, you're in the records room. Um, there are like 10 filing cabinets filled with information on the patients for the last 40 years. Are they alphabeticalized? They're alphabetical. all alphabeticalized. Would okay, you like to roll? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the D and and you guys go to the P's. Okay. Okay, great. This is so me going through files. You find Lori Pickering. You okay, find great. Lori Pickering. Great. And I still want like a read English or a library use role to find the interesting thing in this file. Because I can tell okay. you right away for free that she was. Okay. Her file says that she was admitted uh, because she had. Let me see here. Let me get Where this is right. Read English. Okay. I have an English language. She was committed for female hysteria. Motherfucker. Wow. Um, yep. And it said that she had been exhibiting uh, dangerous behavior with young men. And they prescribed rounds and rounds of sleep therapy using barbiturates, meaning uh, what your friend Tim told you, the sleep therapy means they were giving her barbiturates to keep her asleep for days at a time. Oh, my God. And I want you to know that these are the kind of things that actually happened to people back then if they, you know didn't do what their wealthy family said and went out with a boy that the family didn't like or went to a speakeasy. This is the kind of things that would happen to them sometimes. Oh, now, I want to know I how did your library on. use role go? I have a hunch. Yeah. What if this guy she really loved and then he died and now that's why he's torturing Daryl? Well, something, some type of behavior she was doing with this with a young man is what it is, but it's not like Daryl is a step up. What? Like did, how family, did your library use role go, or your I, um your read English role? Wait, I, Jared, what is read English? I don't see that on the list. It's own language English. I'm sorry, oh, I own language. I have a seventy for that. Okay, you're scanning quickly because you guys broke in here basically. Okay, I have oh, got I a got thirteen. A one. You got an O one. Oh, one. I have an eighty. Yeah. I have an eighty. Nora, you are the one that finds tacked okay, to then. Lori's file, it kind of falls out a police report and an incident report. A man named Randall Kelly broke into Arkham Sanatorium on the night of December 24th, 1914 and tried to break Lori out of the okay. asylum. This is the guy with the big lips. This is the boyfriend. He was shot trying to escape with her. Shot dead? Yeah. Oh, He yeah. was 18 years old. So young. You hear so footsteps to rushing Garrett? toward the records room. So he's why would he... Shit, they're coming. I mean, he's he's who's trying to kill Daryl, but it just seems fucked up to do to Daryl. Like, he didn't know, and he... Unless... I don't... Uh, what if Daryl shot him and Daryl worked here? The got, records oh, room, oh God, suddenly the door... She's conjuring him. Wait, she's, what? She's conjuring him. She's... Like or bringing conjuring. Him. Conjuring. Yes, the conjuring. door flies open, and there are security guards, and they have guns, and they point them at you. We put our arms up. Like, put your hands up. This is a secure location. You do not point a knife at my staff, Missy. What? Chad let us in. Clive, Clive. <laughs> you can see Chad and Chad's going that those are them those are the bitches man those are the ones he's framing us going, you do not break into my hospital okay and okay okay all of a sudden you see his hand go Whoa! and he goes what the fuck and then his finger goes down and his brains go everywhere make a sand roll 
Who is this? Clyde? Sanity. The it's owner of the house. This is the policeman. Sanity. No, no I no, thought it was. Who is it, Jared? Who is it? The security guard that came in and okay. pointed a gun at you. I rolled up 34 and I have 60. Okay. Oh, you lose no. one sand. Wait, no. I rolled zero. No, I rolled under. All zeros. That means you rolled a hundred and you're about to lose a bunch of sanity. I oh, lost a hundred cool. too. I rolled a hundred. Okay. Uh, yes. You there. lose five sanity, Nora. And uh, Nastya, you lose I'm three sanity. Five fucking sanity. I'm going to go crazy. Make an intelligence roll, Nora. Okay. My intelligence is at the top, right? Okay. Fuck. I went way over. Am Nastia going over is good for intelligence. Yeah, because you guys like scream. You all have <sighs> blood on top of you. You definitely saw that hand go whew, and then blow the guy away. Um, the phantom takes another victim. And we will conclude this storyline next oh. time we play in two weeks. Well, as blood, we're going to come back with blood all over us. In a yeah. You're going to come back with blood all over you. You broke into uh, asylum. They'll probably commit you. Who knows what will happen? Oh, my God. That's like one of my biggest fears is being committed against my will. We're going to be okay. That's where we should go okay. with the story. We're going to get out of there, though. Um, you guys were absolutely fantastic. You were so funny and so good at investigating. What did you think? Where where, where, where do you think it's going? How do you feel? Uh, something fucked up. This guy is punishing everyone who is associated to the hospital. But I, him going after Daryl is kind of strange. But Maybe Daryl yeah. is treating Lori poorly. Mm, wow. Lori All I can made say is you've kind of figured it out, but now you have two weeks as uh, players to go figure out what you will do about it. And somehow we didn't solve it. You did. You kind of did. Yeah. But now you have to figure out what are you going to do about it? And that could take two hours next time we play. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, you guys were amazing. Um, this was fun. Uh, could everybody give them a, a digital round of applause in the chat? This is Kara Clank. Megan Gailey and Lisa Traeger. Follow them on all socials. They're on all the social things, Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff. Um, and um, let them know how much uh, you uh, enjoyed watching them play because you guys are natural role playing geniuses. Wow. I mean that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to these uh, ladies right now. Uh, yeah, Ooh, there's our friend these Clancy. Are so cute. Cute. Uh, Good job. Good job detectiving. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I I thought the comments were gonna be like these idiots. <laughs> no, you guys are really good at it. Wow. Um, well, I mean, like, truly, like of dumb these bitches. Are, these are better comments than I get when I do stand up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna be back on August 18th, uh, continuing our foul-mouthed Ghostbuster series, Coven. <laughs> parentheses of bitches and parentheses uh and these girls will be back then thank you guys again i'll say bye bye Hell yeah. i'm gonna hang out bye bye uh i'm gonna hang out just for a minute if people have any comments or questions but i've got to run through my little uh my little end show credits and uh and news for stream of blood um so again two weeks august 18th same time 7 p.m uh, Pacific. We're going to have the continuation of uh, this storyline. Stream of Blood is back tomorrow with the conclusion of season one of Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition Vampires of Pittsburgh with Thomas Middleditch, Ashley Birch, and Ross Bryant. Uh, we're going to be taking the week off after that and then returning on August 19th. But I think you know we've done 20 episodes. This will be 21 tomorrow night. And we have brought our uh, characters there full circle. So we're calling this the end of season one. And then we will start back on August 19th. And the uh, show will be the same cast, same characters, continuing the same storyline. But we'll, we might jump ahead a little bit in time. Things might be just a little different. So it'll be kind of like you're watching a new show. And then uh, next week... Uh, you know, you have time to catch up on all those episodes of Vampires of Pittsburgh. Um, our our Victorian era Call of Cthulhu campaign, the Neptune Society, uh, will be taking this coming Sunday off. 
uh, because we just finished our big Gen Con storyline with Guy Branham and Henry Zabrowski and Adam Conover, and we had like a big three-parter. So we're going to take uh, take this coming Sunday off, and we'll be returning on August 16th with a special three-parter uh, starring our favorite laudanum-soaked naval surgeon, John McCorkadal, played by Humphrey Carr. Please follow us on twitch.tv forward slash stream of blood. Keep up with our schedule and find out about all the things we have planned on social media by following us on Instagram and Twitter underscore stream of blood underscore. We're on Reddit at r forward slash stream of blood. And please join our Facebook group where we have all kinds of conversations and things all the time. Um, Our character artwork for Coven is by Adora Rose, who does such amazing work, right? And you can see more of her work on Instagram at Adorala, A-D-O-R-A-L-L-A. She's really fantastic. Um, Okay, I'm here for a second if anybody has anything. Otherwise, I just want to say I'm so happy that we got to do this um, because I love these ladies and I love playing with people who aren't maybe hardcore role players. Um, So there's that. Um, Is there any chance we see Miskatonic University in this series? Any canonical professors? Um, So uh, maybe... Um, I think that this series is going to be less about Cthulhu mythos things like, uh, less great old ones and outer gods and all that old HP Lovecraft stuff. And it's going to be more like ghosts and witches, um, and weird occult stuff. Um, uh, simply because I haven't seen that done in a call of Cthulhu game a lot. Right. Um, I've seen a lot of deep ones and we have all that over in our Neptune society game. Um, I've seen a lot of, you know, great race of Yith and all that weird Lovecraft stuff, but I haven't seen as much of the kind of just occult horrors, the ghosts and things like that. So, um, yeah, this series will be a little bit more like that and it'll be every two weeks, I think, uh, for a little while. Um, how did you not target market this to me? Oh, Guy, hey, it's our friend Guy Branham, who, uh, was on our just last episode of the Neptune Society. Um. I think you definitely have to guest star on uh, Coven of Bitches at some point. I think that's for sure true. And uh, it is, it's targeted marketing, uh, hopefully, to uh, quite a few people. We realized, or, or my very smart producers, Brian Baldinger and Clint Trucks, realized that Vampire had a lot of uh, female viewers. And um, I don't know, like these three comedians that played tonight are just so effortlessly funny. Uh, and bring, I think, I think this is like, okay for me to say a very female sensibility to things that you don't always get with like, uh, me and my nerd friends, uh, talking about what kind of, uh, automatic weapon we're using against a robot. Okay. Uh, hoping you reflect on how GMing this game with these ladies compared to vampires and other crew. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's great, right? I mean, like vampire is so intense. These guys are like, uh, you know, a mile a minute ideas are flying at me. Vampire is intensely emotional. And this one is like the energy is just sort of off the charts. But, um, but uh, I mean, I love this. I love this. I was, you know, I'm always trying to like keep up uh, with my wife and her friends and uh, hopefully I was able to do it. Um, Okay. Anything else? That looks like it's maybe it. So I'm going to say good night and sweet dreams. And I hope that there aren't any ghosts or uh, renegade tulpas in your life. Uh, Be safe and donate to Join Campaign Zero. You can go to joincampaignzero.org to do that. We don't ask for any Patreon donations here, but we would love it if you went over there and gave them whatever you can. That's joincampaignzero.org. Because I think if you watch the news or look at your Twitter feed, You know that there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the news. We would like to keep the horror here in our little role-playing stream uh, and not out there in the world where we all have to live. Okay, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.